Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Clever Clarinetist. I'm your host, Dr. Larkin Sanders, and today we're talking about retools. So cleverly managed to handle all five of the tools I'm going to discuss with you today in regards to adjusting reads and just making your life a little bit better overall clarinet wise. Um, I'm all warmed up, I'm ready to go. So we're gonna kind of start with the most old fashioned version, the knife, work our way through the read geeks and then hit this new little guy here, the ALE read balancer. And I'm gonna give you a quick demonstration of each of these tools. Um, if you're curious about like the basics of reads, how to store them, how to keep them, how to break them in, I really recommend that you see a previous video that I made all about reads. Otherwise, let's dive right on in. We're going to be working with the Diderio Reserve Evolution reads today. I'm using a strength three and a half plus, which is a quarter strength um, denser than I normally would. I would usually just use a plain old three and a half, um, but the plus aspect of this should give me a little bit more read to work with. Uh, and these blanks are the thickest blanks of all of the Dario's reads, so it'll also give us just some more material to work with in general. Um, not typically my read of choice, so I'm sure I'll find lots of fun work to do on these reads. So I have also never played on these before. These are brand new reads. Um, so let's see how it goes. Now the read is on my mouthpiece, so let's give it a test. I'm gonna test it just by playing an open G to see how I feel about it, and then I'm gonna play a slurred three octave F major scale. figure out in what way the read is hard um, to know what to do with our device. So I'm going to see how the read is balanced by testing each side of the read by angling the mouthpiece in my mouth. I'm going to tilt it up to my right this time so it's exposing this side of the read, letting this side of the read vibrate and then I will turn it to the side and this side of the read will vibrate. Just to get on, excuse me, open G. So it's very um, unbalanced, this read is. It's really hard on the uh, my left hand side of the read. So we'll take that into account as we start the adjustment process. I also have a feeling that it is warped just generally by the fuzziness I'm getting and how resistant it is. Uh, I would expect a three and a half plus to be resistant on my setup, but not quite this resistant. Um, unfortunately, if we're using a knife, um, we can't really do anything about the warpness we have to incorporate some other tool, either a bastard file or some sandpaper with which we would grind down um, the flat side of the reed. Okay. So we know that that is a very hard read and our first tool of choice is going to be a traditional knife. Um, it's Landwell, it's made in Canada. This knife is about a hundred bucks or it was when I got it uh, many years ago. I have since moved on from knives because they have some pretty serious cons. Uh, one you can really easily hurt yourself. These things, if they're sharp and right, are razor sharp. Um, so yeah, you can really easily hurt yourself. Number two, you can't carry them on an airplane. So if you're doing any traveling and you think you might need to adjust your read in a new location, which is likely, because there's a good chance you're changing climates altogether, right? Um, you would have to check a bag and make sure that your knife gets into your checked baggage. I have friends that have literally had their knives thrown in the garbage by TSA agents. So if you want to use a knife, make sure that you are stowing it properly when you're traveling. Three, um, knives require a lot of maintenance. Um, so you have to be able to sharpen your own knife. And I honestly never learned how to sharpen knives because I would just give my oboe playing friends a few bucks and they would sharpen my knives for me. You can also take that route. Uh, if you have any trustworthy double read friends that, you know, live by the knife, um, they might be able to help you out. Um, you can also, also often buy used knives off of your double read friends um, if you're interested in the knife path. Um, for me, the only real pro for knife use is that um, it's traditional. 
This is how people have worked on reeds forever. Um, there are, so it's been around forever and there are a lot of materials on how to use knives on reeds. A lot of older teachers will know how to use the knives. Um, but that's, honestly, that's about it. I'm, I'm not a fan of the knife. Uh, I have been taught how to use a knife, so I will do my best to kind of demonstrate how you can adjust reeds with your knife. All right, I've got a new reed on my mouthpiece. Again, brand new, never been used. Uh, Diderio Evolution 3.5 Plus reed. Um, let's test it and see how it goes. All right, at first glance, this reed is also really heavily unbalanced on the left-hand side. Um, now that we've seen two reeds that are unbalanced on the left-hand side, it might be the manufacturer of the reed um, it might be their fault, but it also might be my mouthpiece. My mouthpiece might also be a little bit off balance. If you're consistently showing that, <clears throat> excuse me, your reeds are off balance on specifically one side, uh, your mouthpiece might be off balance. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It will result in potentially less endurance. Like you might find yourself more fatigued in your embouchure. Um, but that's a discussion for another time. Just be aware. So I'm going to play an F major scale and see how I feel about this read. Oh man, the things I could do to this read, am I right? Uh, the next three tools are going to be Read Geeks. So this is the Double Geek, um, and I have these for sale on my website. Well, if you're familiar with the traditional line of Read Geek instruments, um, this is one of the fancier ones. It comes with two different handles, so this handle is uh, detachable. And it also comes with a smaller uh, plastic handle, but if you like the feel of a heavy tool in your hand, I know for some people that makes it easier for them to wield something, uh, this could be really great for you. And it's also longer than a reed geek, because reed geeks are usually just this part, and so this gives you a little bit more leverage. Um, that might be appealing to you as well. Um, and the geek itself, so the actual cutting surface has nine different uh, cutting surfaces on it. So each side of the geek, each corner of the geek is something you can use against your reed. And then we have some curved edges here and then a little sharp edge there on both sides plus the little, the little eraser head tip. Um, you can definitely find ways to use all of these different cutting surfaces, but I know that um, amongst double reed playing friends of mine, this geek is really popular. Um, I don't often see clarinet players with this geek, but I think it's awesome. So let's get to work and see how we can make this read better with the double geek. Okay, so we've got our double geek and our new reserve evolution read. So the first thing I'm gonna actually do is flatten the back side of this read a little bit uh, I suspect that it could just use uh, less cane overall for me and my setup. So I'm going to use one of these flat sides, rest it on this side of the reed. Again, similar to the way I was holding the reed with the knife, I'm going to support the vamp against my first finger and hold onto it with my thumb. So I'm just going to take some wood off the back side. Admittedly, I am a lot more practiced using reed geeks because they are um, biasedly <laughs> my tool of choice when it comes to reed adjusting. And now I've taken a lot of wood off the tip and now I'm gonna turn around and take some wood off the butt. It's actually really important that we take wood off of both sides and especially that this end is flat because this is the side that has to make suction against your mouthpiece table. And the flatter it is, the more successful it will be at creating that suction. Okay, and then I also remembered that this side is a little bit um, heavy. So we're gonna balance that out a little bit. So this tool, in my opinion, has already got a leg up on the knife because I don't have to get a separate tool to flatten out the flat side of the reed. I can use the Geek for the top, for the vamp of the reed, and for the back side of the reed. Um, you can also get reed geeks with this cool uh, plaque and gauge set. This is the plaque, so you can use it to measure your mouthpiece. And I recommend that you check out Morrow's videos on how to measure your mouthpiece and how to do all the cool reed geeky stuff. But for today's purposes, I really am just going to balance the reed the way I like to balance my reed. Um, and, I'm, and 
something that also is cool about this is that these are ambidextrous tools, so I can be my ambidextrous self and switch hands and use my left hand <laughs> to really work on the left side of my read. Um, you know, conversely, you can stay right-handed and keep doing it. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to switch hands to change sides of the read to work on. Um, whatever works for you. I'm using the little eraser head to kind of take off some of the wood off the tip uh, and hopefully balance my read out a little bit. I'll take a little more off and give it a shot. In general, this tool is just easier to wield. It's really nice and heavy in my hand, so I don't feel like I'm having to press down on the reed to take cane off. Um, and I really like this plaque to use for tip work. I think it makes me feel more secure that I don't have my finger right under it. And I feel better knowing that my reed is staying on a flat surface instead of on a curved surface like my finger. So let's go back, let's test it out, see how it did. All right, I have my newly adjusted reed on my mouthpiece from the Double Geek. Um, and I can already tell by putting the reed on the mouthpiece that it has a better seal um, on the butt end of the reed against the mouthpiece. So that's a good sign. Now let's play it and see if it got any better. Alright, we're back for adjustment round number two. Um, let's try using one of these other cool edges to make this a little bit better. So I'm going to support the reed with my finger like you've seen me do before and I'm going to use this kind of beveled edge to work on, on the edge here. This is a little less risky than using the eraser tip um, because the edge is, this edge is not quite as sharp and it's rounded so it's easier to move across the reed and this might actually be the better way to work on reed balancing you don't even really need your plaque if you don't want it all right so i'm taking a lot of cane off of this reed now on, on the other side i'm kind of hoping that this side is on the light side now but let's see what happens all right the reed's back on the mouthpiece after double geek round two adjustment let's see how it does getting waterlogged from all the work so let's change reads and go on to the next tool all right we've got our next tool in hand that this is called the bullet and this is another form of read geek and to me this is like the clarinet player's dream tool it's so nice and little um and like all the read geek products you can totally travel with them you don't have to check this in your checked luggage um it's made of carbide and it's nice and heavy. It has a good weight in my hands for such a little tool. Um, it has the same amount of cutting edges as the Double Geek, but in a different way. Um, so you can see we have these curved edges here for that balancing action. We have the eraser head in the front. We have all four signs here. We got four so far, seven so far. Okay, this thing has eight, whatever. This has eight surfaces. And then the handle here, if you've ever used reed rush, this is a very similar texture to using reed rush on your reeds. Um, I really like this end if my reed is just gunky. Like if it's old and I just maybe want to get a little bit more life out of it and get the gunk off a little bit, this is the surface for that. Um, this, I call it the rush end, the reed rush end. Um, so let's get a new reed and experiment with the bullet. All right, I've got a fresh read on my mouthpiece. Let's see how it tests. This is probably the most balanced read we've had so far right off the bat. Still a little bit tough on the left-hand side, so I'll give that a little wiggle, um, and let's see how the F major scale turns out. I'm just having 
having a hard time getting this reed respond to respond. So I'm going to smooth out the back side um, so it gets a better seal on the mouthpiece and to kind of clear it up a little bit. And we're going to balance the left hand side a little bit. So we'll see you down there with the bullet. All right. So I've got my my reed geek bullet and uh, my new reserve evolution reed. So I'm going to take a little bit of cane off the back side. So you can see already that this takes off wood just a little bit faster than the double geek. And that's probably because this the material that the bullet is made out of is a little bit harder than the material that the double geek is made from. Um, it's nice and heavy. It's a good size for my hands. And I say in the spectrum of ladies' hands, my hands are pretty medium sized. I would wear like a size 7 glove or something. Um, so medium small thereabouts. So I've taken a lot of cane off the flat side of the reed. It feels nice and smooth now, which is great. Yeah, I'm gonna, just for good measure, a little bit more. And the reed's already dried out quite a bit. October, I guess it's that time of year. I'm gonna get my plaque. I'm gonna place the reed on it and I'm gonna work on the left side a little bit. Get my ambid dexterity on. Um, so this might get some people into trouble if this feels like not enough stuff to hold on to. Something like the Double Geek might be better. Um, for me, it's perfect. I don't I don't need anything more than this. This is about the same the size as like a whole new piece of chalk. I like it. I think it feels great in my hands. If you have big hands, it might feel too small. And this little thing is heavy, so I am very gently uh, running this on the side of my reed. You can see I'm kind of swaying to the left side on the bottom this eraser head is really sharp it's much sharper um than the double geeks and but it's good to be taking off a lot of cane i'm gonna switch hands and take off a little bit of cane with my curved edge here Yeah, that's great. Look at all that cane coming off. Um, I know I'm getting excited about taking off a lot of cane. This, These edges don't take off as much as the eraser head does. So if you're also new to reed adjusting and you're afraid of messing up your reeds, then using the side edge is probably better. Um, remember, you can take cane off, but you can't put it back on again. Um, so keep that in mind as you're learning how to adjust reeds. Um, so I think I've done everything I want to do now. Let's try it out. All right, after adjusting this read with the bullet, let's see how it did. All right, it's a lot better. Still not where I want it to be, but for now, that was a really quick adjustment that made a lot of impact really quickly. So let's change reads and get on to the next one. All right, we're on our last in the series of three uh, read geeks that we're talking about today. Um, and something I wanted to add is that these two guys, the Bullet and the Double Geek, uh, are priced at about $115 each. And that includes, um, with the Double Geek, all of its accessories. So it also comes with an additional handle. Um, and the Bullet doesn't come with any accessories. It is just all in one thing. Um, and you can, again, use the Double Geek on its own with the long handle or with the short handle. Um, so it's a great deal for so many different things. Um, but then you have the geek or the, the bullet with so many different um, sides and the heavier metal. Um, and the last one is a little bit of a friendlier price point coming in at a whole $50. This is called the Geeklet. The Geeklet is adorable. Um, it's made out of the same material as the Double Geek. Um, but it's only about half the size. So if you unscrew it. It's a little geek. It's tiny. Teeny tiny geek. And put it back on its handle. Um, it's great for anyone who's new to read adjustment and aren't necessarily ready to make a big investment like of $100 or more into a good tool. Um, but because it, it also has like all the great sharp edges that you would need in a Reed Geek, 
um, but it only has five cutting edges instead of eight or nine. Um, there are fewer choices for better or worse. Some people don't need that many choices. It's just overwhelming and you don't know what to do. So having fewer choices is sometimes optimal. Um, it has that eraser head on the front, and then all four of these edges are also used for cutting in the same way that I've been using the other ones. Um, it feels really good in my hand. It would be great for young people too. Again, you can't like hurt yourself on this. Won't be confiscated by TSA. You can travel with it. Um, and you can work on both surfaces of the reed, like the other reed gates. So in my opinion, even this little guy has way more pros than a knife. Okay, let's hear how it goes. This is already a pretty good read at first toot. Um, so it probably doesn't need a ton of work, but we'll see, we'll see what we can do. of every other read that we've had so far. Phew, it's not moving up easy. It's moving up easy. So the right side is a little bit harder than the left side. We'll balance that out a little bit. Take some, some cane off of the flat side. All right, here I am with the geeklet and this reed that has a little bit of a tough right side and a little bit of fuzz. We're gonna take some cane off the back side, just like we've been doing. Oh, this little guy is sharper than I thought. That's cool. Always nice to be pleasantly surprised by a tool. Wow, yeah, I don't have to work very hard with this. This is a great little guy. Um, I don't have a ton of experience with this tool because my geek of uh, preference is the bullet. Uh, so this is fun for me. All right, we're gonna balance that top part a little bit. It doesn't, since this doesn't have the slanted side, we definitely have to use the eraser head to do any kind of balancing. And I'm gonna do it in my right hand since it's on the right side. Oh, this is great. Um, so something I'm noticing in doing this is that it's way easier to control than the bullet. As far as like sliding off, I remember with the bullet, I would find myself falling off to the side. With this one, I'm definitely not. And that's probably because it's a lighter material. Um, and maybe also because it's not quite as sharp as the bullet. And again, if you're new to read adjustment, that's a good thing. You can take cane off, but you can't put it back on. All right. I'm gonna do some little extra tip work because I felt like I missed that a little bit. Okay, I've done my adjustment. Let's give it a shot. All right, so we just adjusted this read with the uh, geeklet and let's see how it plays. Oh, what a great little tool. Um, if you're interested in purchasing any of these guys, I am going to keep, put links and listings in the comments. I do sell uh, most of these tools on my website, and I'll link you to other places to find tools I don't sell on my website, so you can check them out. My last read on here that we're going to use to try the last tool here, uh, which is brand new to me. So this is an inaugural experiment for everybody, but I watched the videos and I learned how to use it for the most part, so we'll see how it goes. It's the ALE. Uh, read balancer, very cool. Um, this is definitely the friendliest price point, coming in at a whole like twenty bucks. Um, this is the most price friendly option I think that we have on the read adjusting tool market today. Um, and I mean, mine even came engraved, pretty cool for Larkin Sanders. Moist, that's my name. Um, at first glance, it's a nice flat piece of steel, and it has a double-edged cutting surface here on the end. Um, one is a little bit more mild than the other. Little, like, this side is a little bit more aggressive, this side not so much. Um, it's not dangerous, I'm not cutting myself. So like the Regig, you can travel with this really easily. Um, and it comes on a little keychain, even. It's pretty cool, and for, I think, like five extra bucks, you can get this uh, leather carrying pouch. Let's do it. 
to go with it as well. Um, so let's test out this read and see what we can do with the ALE key family terms. Got my new read on? Let's do it. It's a little bit uh, stiff on the left hand side, but not a lot, so I don't think we'll have a ton of work to do on this. All right, here we are with the ALE read balancer and my kind of crummy new read. Um, so I'm going to hold it with my right hand since this is a new uh, thing for me and see how it goes. I saw in videos that you can work with your read this way or this way depending on what's most comfortable for you. I'm going to start this way and see what kind of cane is taking off. It's not taking off a ton of cane, not as much as a reed geek or a knife would, um, but it is doing some work for sure, and it's really easy to hold. It's a bigger, flatter surface than a reed geek or a knife. So if you have a hard time holding on to skinny little things and pencils and stuff like that, then something like this might be really good for you. We've taken off a decent amount of cane on that side. I wonder if it'll work on the flat side. Maybe, yeah, it does. Oh, this is cool. So because this tool is wider than a reed, you can even use it to flatten out the flat side of your reed. This is a great way to undo warping, which um, we've already demonstrated with the reed geeks. So this is already cool. You can do more things with this $20 reed balancer than you can with a $100 knife. Remarkable, just awesome. Cool, ooh, it's nice and smooth. Dang. Okay, read balancer. Let's see how the reads have. All right, let's try the read post ALE read balancer. Oh, excuse me. All right, it's definitely balanced, living up to its name. so much better. Okay, cool. So now um, we have used five different tools today. We started with a knife and then we used three different reed geeks, the double geek, the bullet, and the geeklet. And then we ended with the new ALE reed balancer, all at different price points. Again, we had Oh, where did they go? We had the Landwell Canada knife coming in at about a hundred bucks. Um, some of its pros are that it's a traditional way to work on reeds. Uh, you can bond with your oboe playing friends and your bassoon playing friends with your knife skills. Um, and it's easy to find resources on how to use these devices. Some of the cons are gonna be that uh, you can hurt yourself. You can't really travel with them. You'll have to get other tools. You'll have to get sandpaper or a file to work on the flat side of the cane. Um, and they require a lot of maintenance. So now we have four cons to knives. Can you tell I'm not a huge fan of knives? Then we had the double geek, which comes with two different handles and a full size reed geek with nine different cutting surfaces made out of high quality steel. It's awesome. It's a great long tool. Um, it's nice and heavy, and it was able to really easily do lots of different balancing tricks with this thing. Then we had the bullet, which is my personal favorite. It's nice and heavy. It has eight different cutting surfaces, not only on the geek side of it, but also the handle is a cutting surface as well. It's kind of, in my opinion, the clarinetist dream tool. Both the bullet and the double geek uh, are pricing in at about $115. The last Reed Geek we used was the Geeklet, coming in at 50 bucks. It's the perfect tool for anyone who's getting started in read adjustment. It's nice and sharp and it can work all the different surfaces of your read. And all the Reed Geeks can travel.
And the last tool we used today was the ALE Reed Balancer coming in at a whole 20 bucks. Um, it's the best bang for your buck and is able to balance the reed and flatten the back side of the reed for a better seal against your mouthpiece. Um, but maybe not is, is maybe not the best tool for really small adjustments or really fine adjustments to your reed, where a reed geek might prove to be a little bit better, a little bit easier to wield. Thanks again for watching. Please be sure to see the, um, the description below for links to all these different tools. Um, comment with your favorite read balancing practices. If there's a tool you'd like to see me try out or review, um, please let me know about it. I'd love to always experiment and try new things. Uh, please visit cleverclarinetist.com for more cool products like these clarinets and things you see behind me, these read tools that we are experimenting with, and sweet things like this t-shirt, the claret corn, um, and to get in touch with me for lessons, services, and other great clarinet things. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.